book we just arrived. It's The Rose Tarot by Nigel Jackson. Now this is new. I know everyone's going to say it looks like the Nigel Jackson Tarot, which I have reviewed. Uh, and no. Uh, so yeah, this is The Rose Tarot. This is a big box. I like this. I got this on uh, Emma or uh, on Llewellyn. So I just got this in the mail and I'm very excited to open it. Let's break it open and do what we always do here and look at the cards because everybody wants to see the cards and I respect that. I respect wanting to see them fancy, beautiful cards because I'm all about it. Uh, opens up with a little magnetic latch. Ooh, nice. Nice presentation. A plus, my friends. A plus. It retails for 31. I got it 35% off at Llewellyn's site. Llewellyn runs a 35% off coupon all the time. So check that out. Ooh, nice color book. Nice, nice color book. Let's take a look at the book at the end. Everybody obviously wants to see the cards. So we'll do that. Break open said cards and see what they look like. All right. Uh, the uh, traditional breaking open of the card plastic and not the skin is always the preferred method. So this is one I've been pretty excited about. I remember seeing this and I immediately went and pre-ordered it the same day. And uh, basically, here's kind of what the cards look like. We're going to zoom in some for that. But before we do... There is the back. Now we have zoomed in mighty close because you need to be as close as humanly possible. Look at that. Look at that fool. That is an attractive card. It's laminated, as you can see from the reflection, and it is it's decent. Oh, it comes to here. So, I mean, that's a decent quality. I mean, it feels like a kind of a, um, it does feel like a traditional Llewellyn deck. A little bit of lamination, not like huge thick. But uh, the Fool, we have the Magus. A lot of detail in this. Look at these cards. That is a lot of detail indeed. Oh, these are, these are beautiful. I love this. Look at the High Priestess. That is just great. And the Empress, very happy. So from what I've looked at, in the 10 seconds that I opened it, I uh, noticed that we have non-illustrated minors. So I don't know if some of you are picky about that, but be prepared when you see it. The Emperor, ooh, just the art. The art is so cool. It is very sort of, um, I'm not gonna say pre-Raphaelite tarot style, but I love it. I love the grainy background when we have the blue and whatnot. The Hierophant is there. And very, very sort of old, traditional-looking tarot. Mm, the lovers. Ooh, that is so cool. That is so cool indeed. The angel. we got the moon and the sun in there holding the flame. Uh, a lot of detail in here. I was kind of surprised at just how much detail is here. Then we have the chariot. Looks great. And Justice. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So Justice is sort of hovering in midair, and the sword is actually holding up the, the, two, the two weights. That's kind of cool. I like that a lot. I like how the stars are on her boobies. It's like a little stripper thing there. I mean, the stars are just all over the place, but it, I don't know. All right, let's move on. Uh, yeah, the Hermit. The Hermit there. Very, very cool. I do love sort of the traditional, but not over the top. And very vibrant, but not, again, over the top. We do have the wheel, which looks fantastic. Man, this is... Oh, I can't wait to read with this. This is, this is going to be a reader's deck. This is going to be a reader's deck. I can tell that now. I can tell you immediately. I've just got a good vibe with this deck. It is going to be a reader's extravaganza. This is going to be something where, why is, he, why is she poking his eye? Why do you got to like hide his eyeball? I don't know. Uh, this is going to be a reader's deck. Hanged man. Very, very cool looking. A lot of very sort of subtle things in here too. It's just like a lot. Of, it's, 
you know, not really TDM, but it just kind of wants to lean that way, a little Visconti feel into some of these as well, don't you think? I mean, a little Visconti feel, I mean, a little bit. Depth with the skeleton and the hourglass and sort of the eclipsed sun. Very nice. And temperance. This is one in the advertisement. And that looked great. That looks really cool. So just pouring the different liquids and mixing them into this cup. Very, very cool. Ooh, I love the devil. Look how vibrant that is. That is just straight up vibrant. That is an attractive card. And man, the majors are just knocking me over. Knocking me over. That lightning strike sort of splitting the tower. And the tower looks like it's going to be split open. It's going to be cracked all down through the center. So cool. And the star. Very cool. She's, you know, a little uh, flame coming out of the head. Not bent over. A lot of sort of variance there. And the moon. Very, very attractive. The stars and the drops and whatnot. Kind of cool. And then we have the sun. Pretty pleased with this one, I got to say. Ooh, the swans, the swan feel. Sort of playing the harp in there. Yeah, it's going to be a reader's deck. This is going to be just pure reading power right here. This is going to be something you lay it down and it just says, it, it almost like has its own personality. I hate to say that, I'm not even through flipping it, but it feels like it has its own personality where it wants to express itself and it just wants to be its own thing. Well, like this is, this is uh, just wants to be its own independent thing. All right, we have the Ace of Cups. Oh, very cool, very, very cool. Again, a little Visconti feel, doesn't it? Doesn't it? All right, and we have the non-illustrated minors, but maybe not. I mean, maybe illustrated versus non-illustrated here. That is, that's illustrated but it has sort of a different feel than the traditional rider weight thing. So that is so cool, though, that these sort of illustrated within there, but they want to maintain the TDM feel on the outside. So it's like a mix of both worlds, right? The Three of Cups being offered flowers and playing the, uh, I don't know, is that a ukulele or a viola? I don't know what's going on. Um, the Four of Cups, sort of that depressed look. Yeah, it wants the, it wants the best of both worlds. It's like, I want to be right away, and I'd love to also be uh, maybe a Visconti or a TDM. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. The Five of Cups and then the Six of Cups. It's sort of interesting. Sort of connecting with the unicorn and whatnot. And the Seven of Cups. What are they doing? Sort of is it like digging for gold or searching for gold? Like what's going on here with the rake in the pond? Kind of curious. Or is that even a pond? I don't know. Eight of cups. Ooh, it's sort of like it's taken the... Okay, when you have the eight of cups, they're leaving, right? And sometimes in the back of the five of cups, you have a city. Or in the eight of cups, you have a little bridge to a city. It's almost like they zoomed in on that bridge, sort of taking us away and into our destination. And the nine of cups, that definitely has nothing to do with the original. Very cool. But the ten of cups, we have a nice couple here with the uh, water, water feature. Uh, king. Hmm. Kind of cool. No throne. Uh, that's interesting. We just sort of skip the entire throne. And the queen. Er, no throne but a mm, cloth. No throne but a cloth. It's interesting to how both of the royalties have things in both of their hands, right? Like a rose in both of their hands, and they're a different color. I assume the book will explain why. The Knight of Cups, Mr. Romance himself. He does not have anything in the other hand. And the page. Hmm. That's interesting. Sort of holding back the sleeve. It's got a horn, and they're all holding up sort of the same decorative cup, which is uh, very, very cool. Ace of Swords is extremely attractive. I got to say, for the entire, for the entire um, deck, this is a complete win. 
Um, two of swords, very non-traditional, but the keys, the keys are interesting. The sun moon combo again, and the three of swords, a heartbreak sort of crying with a penetrated sword above us. I like that. And the four of swords, a little bit of a resting feel here with the candle and the book. Kind of interested in what the book says. I guess it'll cover it in what this is in the book. I guess the book, what it says, will be covered in the actual book. Five of Swords. That is interesting. I guess this is the character that flew too close to the sun and melted the wax wings or what have you. And the Six of Swords. So that's interesting. They're in the boat with themselves. And they have like a lantern uh, from the hermit kind of feel. And then we have the Seven of Swords. Uh, not sure what's going on but okay, and the eight, the eight of swords, like a Rapunzel feel, doesn't it? Uh, nine of swords, the nightmare, the illusions of all the stuff that we have, and then the ten of swords. Very, very cool. What the hell is going on there? Very cool, but like what's happening there? And extremely attractive King of Swords. That is some, that's, that's some nice blends. Some nice blends of the purple, red, and green. It's like sort of a uh, complementary color scheme. And continue on with the purple. The Queen of Swords. Then the Knight. And the Knave. The knave indeed. A little bit of a, uh, a newbie there. All right, and the ace of batons. Cool, love the snake. I love the world type of wreath as it goes around. Very nice. And the two of wands. I guess it's sort of like the globe that he's holding in his hand. It's sort of like isolated on that. And the crown indicating that indeed it is domain and it is his kingdom. And you can see the kingdom... Within the globe. Ooh, a lot of little subtleties in here. Ooh, I like it a lot. The three, we have the ship um, that they're normally looking out amongst the sea, and they find the ships in the background. And we have sort of a close-up of the ship. And then the four of wands, the home card. Um, this almost looks like a three of, or sorry, an eight of pentacles. Maybe a three of pentacles? An eight of pentacles, three of ten of pentacles, like they're working on something. The four and the hearts. The five, um, the, uh, yeah, a little bit of strife there. Sort of fighting the dragon with a stick. Not going to show you you're going to make much progress with that. And then we have the six of batons, the celebration wreath that is normally there when he's riding through and being cheered for uh, has been focused on. So many like little aspects of the normal sort of the rider weight feel cards that are sort of pulled out here and made uh, and made prevalent. Eight of Batons, I love that with the rabbit and that, and then defending ourselves against the uh, multi headed snake there, the Medusa, I guess. Um, yeah, we are we're sort of chasing the rabbit, and then the nine, a little bit of a wounded warrior. And the 10, sort of taking on too much. And then we're down to the king. Again, very, very pretty. That's interesting. Nothing, they're not holding this in their left hand. It's just sort of sitting nearby. But meantime, the queen is indeed holding one. So again, with the complementary color scheme, I love it, I love it, I love it. This deck is just really knocking me, knocking me uh, for a loop. I really enjoy it. I mean, if you do have the Nigel Jackson uh, tarot from 2000, that is worth um, like 500 bucks. So if you have that one, you may want to hang on to that one or sell it. That's up to you. Lancelot. Um, interesting. The knave with the shield. It's interesting that the, that the uh, I mean, the, the knave is the only one holding a shield. I mean, you think a page would not be the only one holding a shield, more like the knight or something, you know? Um, the knight does not have a shield? No. All right, ace of coins, very pretty again. 
just sort of really pastel -y, a really sort of a loose feel with that. The Two of Corns and the juggling is there, but with the, uh, the circular pattern almost of the Thoth, right? The snake, the circular pattern with that. And then the three, we have working on it, a bees. You see bees a lot in the three or the eight of pentacles. Bees are very prevalent because they're working, sort of getting that, getting the job done. Bees are more of an eight of pentacles, in my opinion, because the three of pentacles is more of a creativity. Uh, and, and bees are not exactly, I mean, in my opinion, a creative type of thing. Anyway, um, yeah, the four of coins, sort of the greed aspect being guarded by maybe angels. And the five, um, very cool, very cool. Huh, it's sort of like homeless, but not, homeless, but not, very ornate for a homeless. And the six is planting the coins. Uh, that's usually the seven, but okay. I guess they're sort of giving to the earth. Or they're giving to somebody that's out of frame, maybe over here. Um, the seven, now that we're planting. So now we are planting, and um, uh, that looks more like a four of cups. Does that look like more? Okay, come on, back me up here. Doesn't that look like a four of cups? Um, that, that's so weird, just the posture and the uh, not wanting to deal with it type of thing. And then the eight of coins, right? We're doing our, we're doing our work, basically getting our work done. The nine, we are, we are wealthy, we are enjoying the fruits of the labor in the seven, and finally the ten, which looks great. That's a bountiful, right? That fall feeling for the ten, they really sort of kept that, uh, kept that, they kept that nicely. The king, and they, he has a shield, and the queen, the knight, and the page. Man, I love it. 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 Uh, there is the side. This the uh, the shuffle ability. Is that a word? Look at look at look at this. Look at the shuffle ability of this deck is unmatched. It's uh, it's perfect. It's like the perfect size to shuffle, and it just sings. It just sings. It just lets you do with it what it wants, what you want. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful, beautiful shuffle. Beautiful shuffling deck indeed. All right, we're going to look at the book, and we're going to change the camera so that we can actually see the text because this camera is very peculiar about capturing stuff. So uh, we're going to go up so we can see the book, and then we're going to check it out. All right. What do we have in the book? It is a full color book with glossy pages. I mean, it really feels glossy. Um, it really feels high quality. Obviously, 2021. And let's see, we have the Secrets of the Rose Tarot. We have the Major Arcana Minor in 61, Consulting the Tarot and Insights of the Rose. All right, let's look at the Major Arcana. I love that we have a page. That shows all of the uh, the cards there. We have the Magus, for example. I'll let you pause and read the chapter on the Magus. We have the divinatory meanings on the left. We have the High Priestess and sort of the end of the, the Magus. Let's go to the end of the High Priestess there. And, ooh, so like a little bit of a leftover text there. A little bit of a leftover text there. We'll look at one more. Let's flip to uh, Judgment. So I'll let you pause and read Judgment. And then we flip over here to that. Not as much text as I thought it would be. The fact that they just wasted all of this space is, is highly unusual, actually. I mean, I would have just kept writing. Personally, I just would have kept writing uh, until I fill up that space, but this, I'm not, I didn't do it, so, you know. This is not my deck. So, the Ace of Cups, I'll pause and let you read that one. And then let's do one Court card, would be great. Let's do the Knave of Cups, not the Knight of Cups. So, again, a light on the text, I would have gone through and filled up that space. 
uh, is what I would have done. It seems to be a lot of wasted space on that. All right, let's go to the back here and check out what spreads we get, what good stuff. All right, Consulting the Rose Tarot starts at page 175. And Wisdom hath builded her house of seven pillars. Hmm, interesting. Then we have the Italian method, the 12 houses. Uh, and then enter signs of the rose. So we have a little bit more text here and whatnot. Um, let me crack the spine because it's what I do. I'll pause and let you sort of read through that if you'd like. Give you a little bit of a sample there of what you're getting. And um, oh my. Is that coming apart? No, that's good. Um, I mean, overall, that's interesting. It is very interesting. It has a lot of text in here about sort of the history and a little bit of what this means and whatnot. So uh, we have a glossary, too. I like that. A little bit of a glossary. So overall, this is a win, guys. This is a win. This is a huge win. Love the cards. I think the book is great. Um, I really would have preferred a little more detail on some of the cards, right? Like, just sort of dive me deep in here. It's sort of a cursory glance at some of the meaning of the cards, in my opinion. They could have gone farther. But, but overall, overall, get a nice magnetic box. You get a beautiful, and I mean beautiful, set of cards um, sort of like a not illustrated and illustrated minors combined. Um, so you get the best of both worlds. And overall, I'm really pleased. And the shuffle ability is just unheard of. That is just, that is unheard of. Look at how smooth that is. Love, love this deck. A plus, A plus. Absolutely enamored by this deck. I'm going to say now, the Rose Tarot. Let me know what you think about it. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.